about 48 hours uh, since Miller Lite decided to uh, anger the men who drank their product. But I want these people to know this right now. Miller, you're not special. We can make fun of you too the exact same way we did Bud Light. Since Bud Light became a beer for gays, I've switched over to Miller Lite. Haven't looked back. Now, this is a brand that respects its customers, knows what it's like. Put in a hard day at the plant. Women were among the very first to brew beer. Fuck this shit. It's time beer made it up to women. So here's to women, because without us, there would be no beer. I guess that explains the shorts. Before I uh, start this video, which by the way is going to be primarily about Miller Lite, uh, we're also got to talk about Target and why it is that people are just now showing up to the party to say that we want to uh, boycott them. But we've also got to talk about Sports Illustrated uh, Swimsuit Edition. That right there will be coming up more towards the end of the video. But before we go any further, we got to point something out about Miller Lite that I think a lot of people may have forgotten about. You see, one of these... Uh, woke lords are one of the ones who like to push the woke talking points all the gender stuff all the race stuff at one point in time did in fact do a commercial for miller light borrowing your pants <laughs> called skinny jeans it's kind of in right now they're kind of not that ladies and gentlemen is Meghan markle you know the the Meghan markle who married a harry the queen of england who constantly goes on about her race and how it is that the royal family is racist and all that stuff there you know one of the uh, the woke revolutionaries and one of the fake wokes they throw out there to kind of you know pass the uh, kind of press the whole woke narrative woke agenda sjw stuff yeah very, very weird how the hypocrisy is uh once you actually go through the internet and actually uh go through everything you find a lot of uh very interesting stuff so here's the deal uh, I went through some research and I looked at what was going on with Miller Lite and I tried to find all the information I could. Went to Twitter, went to uh, Google, went through Safari, all that stuff there because I use Apple. And uh, I found something very interesting. Apparently this ad came out on March the 15th or maybe it was made on March the 15th. And my guess is that either Miller decided to release the ad after all the fallout with Bud Light because maybe they felt they could get away with something. But of course there's also the possibility that maybe it may have been released and we just didn't see it couple of issues to go on top of uh, these people making fun of uh, or going after men, attacking the, uh, the main source of their consumer product. You can't be saying the S word too much. After a while, it's kind of like that episode of South Park that they had where the whole uh, the S word was a cursed word. That, that episode there, how it was that it kept on getting used too much and people just started dying and stuff. Yeah, it, I, I know it's a bit of a, uh, maybe, maybe a bad time joke here, but still at the same time, though, after a while, if you use certain words too much, it just gets completely old. So I had to do some digging and uh, I found some very interesting information on this situation. Now, a couple of things are going to be covered here. And one of them, of course, is going to be imposter syndrome. We talk about it a little bit more after you guys see this clip that we got from uh, one of my favorite guys of all time, Mark Dice, who, by the way, always comes with receipts because he can find things that nobody else seems to uh, not be able to find. Make sure you guys stick around for the full 10 minutes. I'll come back on the other side. This woman. Hey, my name is Sophia Colucci, and um, I live in Chicago, and I'm the vice president of global Miller family of brands uh, for Molson Chorus. And in a desperate attempt to try to avoid the backlash that Butt Light is facing, she has already deleted numerous Facebook posts, like this one singing praises of the newly canonized Saint George Floyd. The woman who ruined Butt Light went to Harvard. So tell us, what's your education, lady? I am leading teams with Harvard and, you know, uh, Kellogg MBAs and it was definitely like a little bit intimidating when I got here and seeing that and thinking Ooh, like I don't even have an MBA and I came from an undergrad school that you guys have never heard of um, but that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter because you're a moderately attractive woman some people would say and obviously that's how you've skated through life and gotten to where you are. I mean what's next is she going to admit that she's a total phony and not even qualified for the job? <laughs> Oh wait, what's this? I talk a lot about the imposter syndrome I've had my entire 
life. Like I talk a lot about it and guess what? It's not gone. Like it's still here. I doubt myself all the time. Ben and I chat about it. Wait, hold fun. on a second. Before you go there, do you have imposter syndrome? Do you that voice in your head? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And men have it too. So, but you're right. You're right. I'm glad you say that because as I've talked about it at Miller Coors, I've actually had a lot of men come to me too and say like guys on my team. So <laughs> sure they do. Whatever you say, they're like, oh, I feel the same way. Maybe we should meet after work over a beer and talk about it. Imposter syndrome, for those who don't know, is a psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds. Alexandre Ocasio-Cortez has admitted that she has imposter syndrome and many celebrities suffer from it because they know that not all of them, but most of them don't have any special talent. And they know that the only reason that they're famous and rich and a celebrity is because they happen to just win the audition lottery and got picked for a part in some TV show or some movie that happened to catapult. So we're finding out that the CEO, of course, or the person in charge of marketing is once again a woke SJW lady. Now, ladies, I love y'all, okay? And there's nothing wrong with a woman being in charge, being a CEO, but what there is a problem is that there is a, a big-time problem with woke SJW lib women, especially woke SJW lib women who come from uh, much, much more Ivy League institutions like, say, Harvard. Uh, yeah, typically, uh, they tend to always elevate the worst people from those schools. I have no idea why they do that. And Harvard's a great institution. I'm not against that at all. And I'm not against uh, Yale as a school. But it's very funny, very weird how it is that you trace our politicians and some of our leaders, a la Skull and Bones or whatever, and you find Yale or you find Harvard. They always tend to prop up certain personalities from those institutions. I wonder why that is the case. Maybe it's because they're... I don't know, supposedly smarter than all of us, so they figure that whatever they say we're supposed to follow. Just very, very weird stuff. Imposter syndrome. I want to go ahead and cover this really quick. I don't really know a whole lot about that, except that I've been around some people who uh, have been diagnosed with it. I haven't really studied it, but I've noticed something very, very common with imposter syndrome. It seems to me that anytime somebody who's an imposter or anybody who has this uh this type of uh, ordeal, it seems to me that whenever they finally speak up on their own behalf, meaning actual full confidence in themselves and being themselves, they always tend to find a way to completely fail and fall flat on their face, completely screwing up any, of the, any bit of their credibility. Actors have an issue with that. Once they got a hold of social media, they use it as a platform to kind of lecture us rather than just simply reading the script that they read on set during interviews. And of course, we expect them to have actual honest to God personal lives. But then when they come out and say something, they said something completely stupid. Now, back to Miller Lite. Why in the world would you go out of your way after Bud Light did what they did and completely piss off your entire consumer base? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Look, I'm not saying that ladies have got to be walking around in bikinis or whatnot, but the minute I talk about women in bikinis and why it is that women need to take back the more feminine feels like modeling, you know, clothes modeling, bikinis, you know, lingerie, whatever, the, the, the type of feminine things that ladies typically do, of course, talk about stuff like, say, women's sports, the typical roles that are designed for women and women alone that they are good at because they have a talent for that, not to mention who the hell wants to look at a dude in a bikini. Let's just go ahead and be honest. That Sports Illustrated immediately chooses to release this ordeal here with his moon on the cover. Yes, and then to make matters worse, they then turn right back around and then they put Martha Stewart. I thought this was a joke at first. Then I looked at it again and found out that it was not a joke or a meme. 81 years old, yeah, and uh, yeah, I have a really, really hard time with this one. I, I'm just not okay with putting... Um, old ladies and skimpy clothes and whatnot and throwing them out there. I think it kind of looks sick when Jill Biden does it. I mean, I know somebody's going to say, well, Melania Trump, dude, Melania Trump is not even 50 years old, okay? And she was a model and she was a successful businesswoman before she even met the Donald. There are a lot of beautiful women out there, Elizabeth Hurley. There are a lot of beautiful women out there who are still in their late 40s and 50s and some even in their early 60s. But you're talking 81 years old and she was a convicted felon to go on top of that are you people that's insane right there leads me to target now guys i could have made a, a bunch of videos on each individual company here but i chose not to because i think there's a greater theme here 
you've got about two and a half weeks. The next thing you know, the month of June is here. It's Pride Month. And of course, you got Juneteenth, which I still personally believe the only reason why Juneteenth is really and truly a holiday, which, by the way, was a Texas and Oklahoma holiday. The only real reason why they're doing this is so that way they can sell product. It's designed to create more consumerism. Juneteenth Day, you know, come to uh, come 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 to uh, come to Best Buy for our Juneteenth sale. Oh, come over here to Target. Come over here to Best Buy. I mean, I already said Best Buy. Come over here to uh, to Belks. Come over here to J.C. Penney's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys are understanding the gist. American Eagle. Everybody just doing all this great sales on Juneteenth, and then it, you know it just it just it just kind of made me think for a second, and I was like. The Target thing has been going on for a while. You see, this tweet from Matt Walsh that I've kind of put up here for a second, well, not really from Matt Walsh, but Matt Walsh was saying we need to boycott Target. And I got to thinking about this, and I was like, you know what, dude? Target has been doing the whole LGBTQ pandering to kids. They've been doing that for over two years. Where the hell have you been? I did a video on the Lego ordeal about the father who went inside the Lego company and basically chewed everybody out for basically pushing the whole pride thing on little kids. And uh, I also include a tidbit from Target in there because Target's been doing this crap for a while. If you go to a Target, you will see these uh, rainbow gear clothes and whatnot geared towards children in every single Target in America. They've been doing it for years. They've been doing it for a few years. We've been calling it out for a while. Why the hell is it that you're just now getting on board, Matt? This is crazy. It makes me honestly... Cr yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to go any further because I don't want to get in trouble here. But the fact of the matter is, is that we've been calling Target out for a while fact of the matter is that it looks like Miller Lite may have tried to sneak one by us, and quite frankly, we were able to catch it. Sports Illustrated, I have no idea what the hell Sports Illustrated was thinking, especially with the swimsuit edition, because how many people, and by the way, from what I understand, Sports Illustrated was a company or was a magazine that was actually dying, and they, I don't know, I guess you could say they kind of saved themselves with the whole bikini swimsuit issue, and then eventually they had SI for Kids. I remember that because I grew up in the 90s, and I used to read SI for Kids, fact of the matter is is that uh, it's, it's getting completely out of control. It has been out of control for a while, but you're probably seeing a lot of companies right now completely ax themselves. One last note that I need to make before we move on here, though. There was one of these tweets that I put up here earlier about um, Miller, and of course somebody had put up there, something is in common. Gillette, woman CEO. Bud Light, woman CEO in charge of marketing. Miller, same exact thing. Have you guys kind of caught a pattern here? I'm not saying that women cannot be in charge. But all three of these ladies are woke women. They are all woke, very, very leftoid type ladies. I don't know if you guys know or not, but there's a bit of a trend here going on. Also, what happened with Victoria's Secret, too. Remember, their CEO or COO, she had to step down as well. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure if we look into Sports Illustrated, I'm pretty sure we're probably going to see that... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to see something there. After the cutting the record button off, I find this right here. Uh, yeah, MJ Day, uh, definitely not woke. Going to hire the first. Renz is, is a swimsuit uh, person, uh, obviously. Um, yeah, you probably got a lot to work with here. Uh, I'll probably make a bigger video on that and probably release it to uh, Rumble because obviously we can't talk about the Renz without uh, getting in some form of trouble because obviously we've got dudes out there who love to get uh, videos removed. Uh, guys, there'll be another video out tomorrow. It will be on the topic in New York City, which of course is covering the uh, whole uh, powder keg that's about to occur. And no, I'm not talking about Daniel Penny. It's something else different. Let's just say that's another case of you get what you vote for. That video will be out tomorrow. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. If I've earned your subscription, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you guys can, please hit the notifications bell. Leave a comment. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. If you guys do that right there, YouTube and ad revenue will just simply take care of the rest, and I will see you guys later.